Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are making the most flaky, most delicious cranberry orange scones with an orange glaze. They are so good, so easy to make. You're gonna love them for Christmas morning. What we're gonna need for these cranberry scones is, of course, cranberries. And um, these are fresh. You can use frozen if you want. You could probably use dried, but I never have, so I really can't suggest it. You're going to need one egg yolk, two tablespoons of orange juice, and I have an extra tablespoon of orange juice um, because this calls for orange zest, and when I went to grab the orange, it was gone. So that's what happens in my house. It probably happens in your house too. That's fine. We can get around that. So I'm going to show you how in just a few minutes. Um, buttermilk, vanilla, flour, frozen butter, one stick of butter, and you want it to be frozen. Sugar, uh, salt, baking powder, baking soda, and powdered sugar. I've also got a little vanilla sugar over here. Um, I made it a couple of weeks ago. I can probably take these vanilla pods out of it. They don't look so great. But um, I'm going to sprinkle a little of this vanilla sugar on the top just for a little flavor right before they go in the oven. Okay? And that is really all you need. So the first thing that we're going to do is kind of clear this off a little bit. And we're going to put the flour in a bowl. We're going to put the sugar in the bowl. the baking soda, half a teaspoon. And remember, all of the measurements and the instructions are down below. Just when you finish watching the video and you want the recipe, scroll down and the full recipe is there, plus the link to the recipe on the blog so that you can print it out or get the nutrition information or look at some of the other tips and stuff that's there, okay? So, uh, baking soda. baking powder, salt, and this is a half teaspoon of salt. Um, it's a half teaspoon of kosher salt. Remember, kosher salt has a bigger crystal than regular table salt. So if you're using regular table salt, take it down to a quarter teaspoon, okay? You don't want it to be too salty, unlike me. Okay, so then we're just going to mix the dry ingredients up. Okay, normally I would keep the butter in the freezer until the very last minute, but I've had it out for a little bit. But you want your stick of butter to be really good and frozen, okay? It will shred better that way. And I'm telling you, I have made scones. We used to own a tea room. Um, that was hard work. But anyway, I used to do scones the regular way where you're cutting the butter into the flour and all of that. And about... 20 years ago, I guess, I started shredding the butter. Since I shredded butter into the pie crust and I already shredded butter into biscuits, I thought, why am I doing it this way with scones? And I started shredding the butter into the scones and it made such a huge difference. It makes them flakier, lighter, fluffier. They're delicious, okay? I've been doing it for years and I will not stop. Okay, so you're just gonna take the grater and you're just gonna grate the butter into the scones. And you wanna do this, or I'm sorry, you're gonna grate the butter into the flour mixture. And you wanna do this as quickly as possible because you don't want the butter to get soft. Every once in a while, stop and stir, well, I should have a spoon here, but I don't. Stir the shredded butter into the dry mix so it doesn't clump all together if it does start to get a little melty. And then just go back and do the same and just on the big side of the grater and just um, grate the whole stick in there. Again, stopping every once in a while to stir the butter into the dry mixture. And see, it's frozen and it doesn't stick together. It just gets covered by the flour mixture and um, it's ready to go. It's it's so easy. The reason that I keep holding the butter with the paper is so that I, I think it helps 
for it. It helps it not melt. Um, where did we go? Here we go. It helps it not melt and uh, it keeps a little of the warmth of my hands away from it. If you're doing this in the summertime instead of the winter time, and you probably wouldn't be doing cranberry scones, but whatever kind of scones you're doing, I have several on the blog. Um, if you're doing this in the summertime instead of the winter time, you're going to need to stop every few minutes and put the butter in the freezer for just a minute or two so it hardens back up. All right, I don't want to get my skin in there, so there we go. That was quick and easy, wasn't it? So that's all we have to do with that. Now, normally this is where you would grate the orange zest and put it in, but if you'll recall, I, oops, we got butter in our orange juice. Um, if you'll recall, I don't have an orange to get the zest off of. So we're gonna stop here. And now we're gonna take this butter and flour mixture and I'm gonna put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes after I stir in the cranberries. Now I'm gonna take it and put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. Be right back. All right, while that's in the freezer, I'm going to take my egg yolk my vanilla and my buttermilk and I'm going to whisk them together. But here's the thing. Remember I said I had an extra tablespoon of orange juice because I didn't have the orange zest. So I'm going to take a tablespoon of the buttermilk out and that's going to get thrown away and I'm going to replace it with a tablespoon of the orange juice. And that way I get that orange flavor that I would have gotten with the orange zest and um, without putting too much liquid in there, okay? So now I'm gonna whisk that up. And then I'm gonna set that aside until the 10 minutes is up. While I'm waiting for the um, dry ingredients to come out of the freezer, I'm going to clean this mess up and then I'll be back. Okay, our flour and cranberry and butter mixture is icy cold now, which it should be since it's been in the freezer for 10 minutes. And we're just going to add our buttermilk, orange juice, and uh, egg and vanilla mixture. Pour that right in. And then just mix it lightly with a fork until we have a dough. And it's going to be kind of a shaggy dough. Um, a lot of, we're going to push in as much dry flour as we can, but um, we don't want this to be too sticky because that will defeat the purpose of shredding the butter and getting those great layers. Okay, just mix that in. Trying to get as much of the dry flour in there as, as I can. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm also kind of mashing down uh, to get that flour in there. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of flour on my countertop here. And I'm going to try to get this together in a ball or as much as possible. And then I'm going to dump it out on the counter. And I'm going to knead it very lightly just to get as much of the butter and flour mixture in there as I can. Not all of it's going to go in, and that's fine. Again, you want this to be a little bit dry and not too, too sticky because um, that makes it lighter and flakier. Okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm not going to roll this. I'm just going to gently pat this out into a circle. And this is going to make eight scones. But I want to keep this in as much of a circle as I can. 
and I want to keep them as thick as I can. And as even as I can. Okay, our scone wheel is about that thick. And that is about right. Um, it goes to my first knuckle on my thumb, thickness-wise. And then I'm going to wash my hands. Hang on. Now I'm just going to sprinkle on a little bit of that vanilla sugar that I was talking about. This isn't in the recipe. It's just I wanted to do it because I thought it would taste good. So we'll see. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that vanilla sugar on the top. There's a recipe for vanilla sugar on the blog if uh, you want to try making it yourself. It's so good and so easy to make. It goes on so many things and I love it around Christmas time. Now what we're going to do is clean up for a minute and I'll be right back. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up gently and put it on the parchment paper on a heavy duty baking sheet. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut this into wedges. So in half, in half again, and in half again. There are our scones. They're all uneven. Now, if you would like them to have crusty sides, then you can move them apart and separate them, or you can leave them together like they are and they'll have softer sides. It's totally up to you. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. I'm going to move some apart and leave some together so that you can see the difference. Okay? Now, we are going to let them sit on the counter for 30 minutes. Most scone recipes don't call for this, but y'all know I have a huge collection of really old cookbooks. Um, and some of them are from Great Britain, and some of them are from the United States, some of them are from France. And one of the old cookbooks um, said that very definitely leave the scones sit for 30 minutes. And I tried it, um, and again, this was years ago, and what I found was they were so much more tender because leaving them for that 30 minutes allows the gluten to relax in the scone, and it just makes them so buttery and flaky and delicious, you won't believe it. So um, definitely do that. If you feel like you don't have time, you don't have to, but I highly recommend it. Also, if like me, you live in a really hot state and you happen to be making these during the summer, you don't want to leave them at room temperature. You want to put them in the freezer. But today it's December and it's kind of chilly outside and so I'm not worried about doing that at all. I'm going to leave them right here and preheat the oven and I'll see you in 30 minutes. Okay y'all, it's been 30 minutes um, and they're ready to go. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna bake these for about 15 minutes uh, or until they're golden brown. And if you check them with an Insta-read thermometer, they'll be 200 degrees in the center. And that will be just about perfect. Okay, the scones at, are at just about 200 degrees. They were in for about 17 minutes before they hit that. So just a little over the 15. And um, they are going to continue to bake a little bit as they cool. So they will definitely be done by the time we're ready for them. So we're gonna let those cool just a little bit. And the way that I like to do it is I like to lift the parchment right off of the baking sheet and put it on the cooling rack and then set that aside. You're gonna to want to put the glaze on the stones while they're still warm, but you don't want them to be so hot that the glaze melts right off. And all this is is powdered sugar and a little bit of orange juice. We may need a little bit more. And just whisk that together until it's smooth.
and once the scones have had about, oh, I'd say let them cool maybe 10 minutes, then we're going to put the glaze on and we'll be good to go. Well, I'll see you then. Okay, now to glaze the scones, and they're still quite warm. I'm maybe hurrying them just a little bit. To glaze the scones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on this cooling rack like this. Actually, I'm going to put them on like this. I need to get be able to get more on there. And then I'm going to put the rack over the parchment paper. That way, the parchment paper will catch any drips from the glaze, and <clears throat> I won't have another huge mess to clean up. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take the glaze and just drizzle it across, just like that. And the parchment is going to catch all of the drizzle, and so it's not going to be all over the counter. It won't be a sticky mess. Pretty cool. Now, you can spoon this on and cover the whole scone if you want. I like how it looks when it's just drizzled. <clears throat> Either way is fine. When they're cooler, the cooler they are, the more the glaze will stay in a straight line and not melt into the scone. Like I said, I'm hurrying these a little bit, but, uh, but it still works and it's fine. And like I said, you can also just spoon the glaze over the top and spread it around and it's delicious that way too. Then you would just let these, the glaze sit for just a minute before you served them. And that's our cranberry scones. Easy, wasn't it? If y'all remember last week, I um, showed you how to make the lemon curd. And uh, I said it was really delicious on scones. Well, let me tell you, it is super delicious on scones. And I'm just going to cut this one open. First of all, look how flaky and buttery and delicious that is. Oh, so good. And then I'm going to spoon this on the inside of my scone. And then I'm going to put the top back on and uh, eat it that way. And probably eat it with a fork because it's going to be really messy. But that's how I like to eat them. So y'all, these are so good and they're so easy to make because when you grate the butter in like that, you don't need any special equipment. You don't need um, to stand there with two knives and play with it for two hours. You don't need a food processor. You can just put these together in a matter of minutes and have them ready to put on the table within 30 minutes. So good, tangy, sweet, buttery. Starbucks can't beat these scones. Come on. Cannot. So good. I hope you'll try them. I hope you love them. Don't forget that the recipe is below, or you can um, use the link below to go over to the blog and see all of the tips and nutrition information and printable recipe that's over there. Um, I hope you come back like next week. Don't forget to subscribe, and I love y'all. Bye-bye. Oh, Emmy and Decky, love you.